In this week's Pearson Workholding Q&A, I get the question, Jay, should I buy a Tormach, a Haas Tool Room Mill, a Mini Mill, or a VF2? Wow. Okay. So the question of the week is, Jay, I'm starting a business and trying to decide if I should buy a Tormach 1100 or move up to a Haas tool room mill, Haas mini mill, or a full on VF series. Uh, that is a big question. Um, let me give you maybe not so big of an answer. What I would say, first of all, I've never owned a Tormach. Um, I've communicated with the Tormach team, uh, great company, uh, great products, making machining accessible to hobbyists, to legitimate business owners just getting started, and really um, uh, machine shops that just want to bring on the capacity of a smaller machine without the expense. And so what Tormach has brought to the industry, I think is great. Now, when I got started, the, uh, I guess the least expensive and most accessible version besides a bridge port was the Haas Mini Mill. I have my original Haas Mini Mill that I bought in 2002. It's a model year 2000, bought it used. Um, terrible time to start a company, great time to buy used equipment. So right in the middle of a recession, I didn't know that at the time. That's why I got such a great deal on like a year, year and a half old machine. It was almost half price. So um, I still own that machine. I've also owned a Haas uh, TM3P. And of course, uh, I'm up to three, four, five uh, VF series mills and uh, probably a sixth one coming soon. Um, so here's what I would say. Uh, from a general business perspective, the, uh, I, I would do whatever leads you to not get into debt. Now, um, if you remember in last week's episode about business, I said, if you are getting into debt, you're building someone else's business. So I like the idea of going cheap, using it to, your, to its maximum potential, selling it, rolling that money over into a new machine. That's exactly what I've done. So I would not own my Haas Mini Mill right now if I were not emotionally attached to it. It's sticking around, it's staying, I've listed it for sale, and then you know, uh, didn't have serious buyers, so I just thought, let's hang out onto it. It's still a great machine. So once you get into the Haas line, they're all really good machines. Now, the product line below the mini series, I would say is the tool room series, very basic machine. I owned one for seven years, uh, worked great. It's such a slow machine, first of all. 6,000 RPM, 4,000 rapids, uh, I'm sorry, 400 rapids, 400 max cutting. So it is not a fast machine at all. But I'll tell you what, I made a lot of money with that machine. It was also really inexpensive. It was the same travels as a Haas VF3, which at that time in the business could not afford a full-blown VF3. And so the mini, I'm sorry, the TM was a perfect addition to the company. Um, I did uh, take out a loan to get it. I remember specifically the payment, $864 a month for five years. I hated being in debt. I hated writing that check, but I didn't have money to just cash flow or buy it outright. And so that was the right decision at the time. Having sold that machine and upgrading to a VF4 SS, VF4 SS, oh, let me, let me back up and say this. This is, this is my observation. The jump from a Tormach to a TM is an equal jump from the TM to a mini mill, mini mill to a VF and a VF to a VF super speed. I, I feel those are pretty equal jumps as far as speed. We don't place speed as a big importance, believe it or not, in this company. Um, like last week's video, uh, I value the process. You can, um, like for example, uh, gosh, I should have told the story last week, but um, I have a friend that um, his machine shop will be really good, make parts, 
and then they would sit on a cart for three or four days. Then they would say, hey, what are these parts doing? Then they would go ship them, and then they'd wait two or three weeks to invoice them. Businesses are here to make money. If parts are sitting, it doesn't matter what machine you have. If they're sitting, you totally erased the speed gains of that machine. If you have an invoice for two or three weeks, you are stretching out your own paycheck. So we are far more interested in the entire start to finish process from when a customer orders a product to when the customer receives the product. And everything in between, that's on us. It is rarely a speed issue. It's always, 90% of the time, a process issue. That's how we could make so much profit with a simple, slow TM machine. Um, the reason we jumped up to a VF4 SS, obviously we can afford it these days, but uh, we wanted the 12,000 RPM spindle because we make uh, a vacuum chucks on it and we do, I think we did three miles of eighth inch wide, 100 thousandths deep slot. Now three miles, whatever, that's not a big deal, but in machine terms, that's a lot of slots. And so when we can go from 8,000 RPM to 12,000, obviously that's a 50% boost. Um, on the TM, 6,000 was just not cutting it. So we had a spindle speeder that we would spin it. Uh, I think it was 4,000 RPM and it was a five time multiplier. So we'd get up to 20,000 RPM, but those speeders are not rigid and any faster than about 40 inches a minute and it would start to deflect. Now with the VF4 SS, we cut at the max speed 12,000 RPM at 100 inches a minute. So uh, that is awesome. The speed boost is nice. Uh, it's more accurate than the TM. There's not a lot of close tolerances on the vacuum chucks other than the grinding, which that's super dialed in and flat, but it's a nice upgrade to have. Also, the VF4 has a 50 inch wide table instead of a 40. Uh, so all those things kind of went into it. But I would, I would go back to my original point. Don't go into debt to buy the best machine, the fastest machine, um, the, the fanciest machine, the, the machine that's gonna look great on Instagram and gonna get you kudos. Um, your ego just is not worth putting the financial integrity of your business at risk. So I love the idea of buying what you can afford. If you can barely afford it, um, then get a loan pay it off, roll it over, roll it up, grow your business. Um, big question. Now, from a specs standpoint, I would definitely say the mini mill is better than a TM. TM cuts a lot of corners um, in, in trying to bring the overall price of the machine down. Such a funny thing. I'm gonna show you a clip here, um, and I'm, uh, you see how on this casting there's three bolts? My TM, to save money, this middle bolt right here, was not installed in the column. Now, I don't know why they did that. The tech said, yep, well, that's kind of Haas's way of saving money wherever they can. That's fine because did that third bolt add a lot of rigidity on this slow machine that doesn't cut, it doesn't, it's not meant for, uh, it's a seven and a half horsepower machine. It's not meant for heavy cuts. So I'm gonna leave that up to the pros. It's just a funny thing and pretty uh, consistent indicator of the corners that were cut and the, the components that were omitted with the TM series. Now, the mini mill, I love the form factor. I love the fact that it works off single phase power. I had my TM in one, two, two locations that only had single phase power. That's great. Three phase power, you get a, uh, a, one of those converters or you have to move. Uh, TMs and mini mills are, are both operate off single phase power. But when you jump up to the VF series, it is night and day between the TM and mini mill. It is, they're such more rugged machines. Uh, of course, the spindle, you go from seven and a half to 30 horsepower peak. Um, the, the accuracy, the speed, it's just everything is just dialed in and polished. Um, I'm a value buyer and I think Haas machines in general offer the most value over other brands. So if you liked what you just heard and you wanna hear more of these QAs from my perspective, please consider subscribing and hit that notification bell so that you know when we put out the next Q&A video. So until next time, go innovate your production.